This unit may be one of the most difficult in terms of reading level of the assignments in the course. Nonetheless, the uh, book by Michael J. Perry, Human Rights and the Constitutional Law of the United States, provides a very informative analysis at the intersection of uh, human rights, international law, culture, and the United States Constitution at a very crucial moment in the history of our country. For many of you, Michael Perry may seem a bit conservative. For others, he will probably seem a bit liberal. Nonetheless, he is an extremely distinguished scholar, and you should learn from the assignments and the book not only some important substantive points and material, but also how a rational, legal, logical argument is and can be effectively uh, developed and built. A key factor in determining whether or not a nation upholds international laws in human rights is whether or not the constitution of that country supports or contradicts them. In the United States, we generally think of fundamental human rights as supported by, embedded even, in the constitutional law of the United States, something that we learn on the school bench. Perry offers us an especially penetrating analysis along these lines in three main topical areas as these pertain to constitutional law in the United States, the death penalty, uh, restrictions on same-sex marriage, and the criminalization of abortion and the limits uh, thereof. He goes on to, he, he anchors his argument, his analysis, on three guarantees within the United States Constitution that intersect with the sort of fundamental purpose in the construction of the treaties, treaties, conventions, and covenants of the United Nations and the international laws um, per our work from last week. These are the right not to be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment in the United States constitutional law, the right to moral equality, and the uh, right to religious and moral freedom. Perry then goes on to discuss these rights and the United States Constitution and the way in which cases are handled of the tradition of the United States of Constitution and the Supreme Court as in terms of the death penalty and the other two bans, how these might support or contradict human rights as embedded in the United States Constitution or as embedded in international law. So this week um, you should start by going to the course site and to this unit on uh, constitutions and human rights. Uh, begin by reading the review of the book, uh, which is short but will provide you a, a nice synopsis. Next, listen to the a vodcast by Perry, which is really on uh, his uh, understanding of constitutional law, his interpretation of constitutional law. Remember, he's a professor of constitutional law, uh, and a distinguished one, uh, and uh, how, how the constitutional law pertains to uh, same-sex marriage and other uh, controversial cur current issues in, uh, in the United States. The book is divided into two main parts. Uh, the first part is the, the morality of human rights. The second part, the constitutional morality of the United States. The first part has three chapters, uh, internationalization of human rights, what is a human right versus what is a legal right, the normative grounds of human rights, uh, much of what we covered last week in terms of the basic international treaties, covenants, and conventions, and then part two, capital punishment, the right to moral equality, the right to religious and moral freedom, uh, same-sex marriage. 
There is a study guide inside the folder, a Word version, uh, which will guide you through uh, the, the Perry text. And that text may take you the full uh, 10 days to uh, complete and to read. There is also a class wiki study guide. Use that uh, wiki, uh, it's inside the folder, to divide the labor, share your work, uh, check your interpretations and how well you are understanding what you read as you read it. The book is short on the one hand, on the other hand, um, the, the logic of the argument is complex and the reading level is uh, for uh, the general public, which is us, as well as for uh, first-year law students. So be sure that you read it carefully and use your wiki. Put your name next to a chapter for initial uh, answers and then next to a chapter that you two agree, you agree to check. Uh, a reminder that uh, this particular book has been a required reading for, at least since its publication, uh, at Oxford for undergraduates. And so it is really within your reach. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll really uh, see in it a kind of uh, legal argument and a way of relating this to uh, values and uh, constitutions that you, you won't get otherwise. So put your name next to a chapter on the wiki that you're going to check. There are 13 students in the class that are nine chapters. Thus, four of you will have some overlapping work. Remember, this is not a contest. It is not a competition over who can do the best or the most, but rather a way of sharing information and knowledge with each other. Uh, over the next two weeks, it would also be great if you could add a column to the, op to the UN Conventions Wiki on the optional protocol for the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. I've set up a page for you in the Wiki from last week. Actually, I copied uh, the work of Yolanda and uh, Joanna for the uh, Convention itself, and uh, I'll just ask you to add that optional protocol. Be sure, the, the, but the optional protocol column, looking at that next to uh, the Convention itself and the ratifications, I think will give you a little deeper insight into the intersection between national culture and uh, the likelihood of ratifying one of these conventions. Participate in the discussion. Uh, that discussion should add significantly to your understanding of the material, and it's a very difficult material. You may use the discussion after you've read the material to engage in uh, an exchange, a cordial exchange over some extremely controversial issues. It's very important. I need not remind you because this has been a great class and you've done a great job. But to be sure to be cordial in that exchange, you may not all agree with each other on key issues. And these issues are, are very volatile or can be in debate. So I ask that you take the opinions and post of others seriously and that you engage with the goal of understanding key ideas and issues and exchanging ideas. Finally, over the next two weeks, I would really like for you to turn that a research statement that you um, posted last week into a research question, a hypothesis, or questions that can be addressed with data at the end of week eight. Uh, you'll be required to submit a statement of your thesis and an annotated bibliography, which puts your thesis in the context of past research. So I look forward to uh, exchanging ideas with you uh, throughout this unit. Please do not hesitate to contact me uh, with questions.